Listening, part one. You will hear some short conversations. You will hear each conversation twice. Choose the correct answer to complete each conversation. Number one. Number one. The most important thing is to distribute the report. Oh, is it ready? Yes, I told you this morning. It's all finished. The most important thing is to distribute the report. Oh, is it ready? Yes, I told you this morning. It's all finished. Number two, number two. I think there's some confusion. No, really. They told me I have to discuss the project with you. No, it's Peter you need to talk to. I think there's some confusion. No, really. They told me I have to discuss the project with you. No, it's Peter you need to talk to. Number three, number three. I think they've done their best, really. Ah, all they've done is make problems. I think you're wrong there. It's not like that at all. I think they've done their best, really. Ah, all they've done is make problems. I think you're wrong there. It's not like that at all. Number four, number four. I can't imagine what's happened to him. He's usually so punctual. He's probably missed the train. I can't imagine what's happened to him. He's usually so punctual. He's probably missed the train. Number five, number five. When's the interview? Tomorrow at three. I'm really nervous. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. When's the interview? Tomorrow at three. I'm really nervous. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. Number six, number six. Excuse me, sir. This area has to be kept clear at all times. Can you do that somewhere else? I've got lots to do. Yes, all right. I'm just waiting for someone. I'm afraid you'll have to get out of the way. Excuse me, sir. This area has to be kept clear at all times. Can you do that somewhere else? I've got lots to do. Yes, all right. I'm just waiting for someone. I'm afraid you'll have to get out of the way. Number seven. Number seven. Now we've made the decision, we'd better tell Carlos. I'm seeing him in the morning. Why don't we tell him straight away?
No, we've made the decision. We'd better tell Carlos. I'm seeing him in the morning. Why don't we tell him straight away? That is the end of part one. Making notes. Questions 7 to 15. You will hear a careers counsellor giving advice on the best way to resign from a job. Look at the notes. The notes contain nine gaps. You will have one minute to read the notes. Now listen to the speaker and fill in the gaps on your answer sheet with a maximum of three words. Do not write more than three words in one gap. You will hear the recording twice. Resigning from any job is difficult. So when it comes to leaving your job, try to make it as easy and as smooth as possible. Therefore, before you hand in a formal letter declaring that you intend to leave, Set up a face-to-face -face meeting with your immediate boss and tell them about your plans. You can even offer to help find and train your replacement. Until the moment you walk out of the door for the last time, you are expected to do your work and behave in a professional manner. Some people develop a who cares attitude in their last few days because they think that they will never see any of their colleagues again. But you never know when your career may bring you into contact with your former employers. So even if you are angry, Never express your anger to your boss and never let your emotions get the better of you. Don't make any statements or express any opinions that you may later regret. If necessary, give constructive criticism, but don't insult your boss or say anything negative about your supervisor or colleagues. What happens if your boss asks you to stay and has a counter-offer for you? You should know that according to studies, 72% of workers still hand in their notice within a year after they've accepted a counter-offer, and 85% of them do it the year after. So be careful and don't give in, no matter how good the offer is. Remember that in the eyes of the company, you're a disloyal employee, and your boss will probably see you as the one who nearly left. And finally, let's look at your letter of resignation. What should it be like? My advice is to keep it short. It can be as short as two or three lines, but it certainly shouldn't be longer than ten. It needs to include only the basic details of your resignation, like the position from which you are resigning, the reason why you are resigning, and your intended leaving date. And, after you've written your letter, it's good to sleep on it and return to it in the morning. If you want, you can rewrite it then with a clear head. And my final advice? Don't burn any bridges, but always bear in mind what's good for you. Resigning from any job is difficult, so when it comes to leaving your job, try to make it as easy and as smooth as possible. Therefore, before you hand in a formal letter declaring that you intend to leave, set up a face-to-face -face meeting with your immediate boss and tell them about your plans. You can even offer to help find and train your replacement. Until the moment you walk out of the door for the last time, 
You are expected to do your work and behave in a professional manner. Some people develop a who cares attitude in their last few days because they think that they will never see any of their colleagues again. But you never know when your career may bring you into contact with your former employers. So even if you are angry, never express your anger to your boss and never let your emotions get the better of you. Don't make any statements or express any opinions that you may later regret. If necessary, give constructive criticism, but don't insult your boss or say anything negative about your supervisor or colleagues. What happens if your boss asks you to stay and has a counter offer for you? You should know that according to studies, 72% of workers still hand in their notice within a year after they've accepted a counter offer, and 85% of them do it the year after. So be careful and don't give in, no matter how good the offer is. Remember that in the eyes of the company, you're a disloyal employee, and your boss will probably see you as the one who nearly left. And finally, let's look at your letter of resignation. What should it be like? My advice is to keep it short. It can be as short as two or three lines, but it certainly shouldn't be longer than ten. It needs to include only the basic details of your resignation, like the position from which you are resigning, the reason why you are resigning, and your intended leaving date. And, after you've written your letter, it's good to sleep on it and return to it in the morning. If you want, you can rewrite it then with a clear head. And my final advice? Don't burn any bridges, but always bear in mind what's good for you. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, let's start by seeing where you can go. As you can see on our map in the brochure I've given you, we are here at the reception block. We have a famous mill which is used for making and processing materials such as steel and coal. To visit it, just go straight ahead, north, along the path in front of you, and you'll find it at the end of the path. Now, towards the east, go along the path from our starting point. Turn left to the corner and then turn right. There is a car park at the east end of the lane. To the west, there is a museum. Pass the shop around the crossroads, and it is just located at the west end of the road. And by the way, the shop is specialised in selling a variety of ore related souvenirs, including key rings, postcards, tin made Lewis chessmen, and even Roman soldiers which are made from beautiful pyrite. If you are interested in the laboratory where scientific experiments, analyses and research are carried out, it is situated at the southern part of the park, opposite the shop. I bet you'll be happy to hear that this laboratory is also used for gold and crystal refinement, so don't miss this one for the sake of it. I assume by this time you'll all need some rest and refreshment. So we have an excellent café which caters for delicious food and beverages at the other side of the road next to the shop. Of course, if you want to spend some time in the fresh air, we have a perfect picnic area which is just right and northeast of the reception block. Further east there is a path leading to the northern part of the park and at the end of it is the toilet. Now, most of the visitors would choose to use the mailbox and send the beautiful postcards to their friends, to reach it, just... Now you will hear again. Let's start by seeing where you can go. As you can see on our map in the brochure I've given you, we are here at the reception block. We have a famous mill which is used for making and processing materials such as steel and coal. To visit it, just go straight ahead, north, along the path in front of you, and you'll find it at the end of the path. Now, towards the east, go along the path from our starting point. Turn left to the corner and then turn right. There is a car park at the east end of the lane. To the west, there is a museum. Pass the shop around the crossroads, and it is just located at the west end of the road. And by the way, the shop is specialised in selling a variety of ore-related souvenirs, including key rings, postcards, tin-made Lewis chessmen, and even Roman soldiers which are made from beautiful pyrite. If you are interested in the laboratory where scientific experiments, analyses and research are carried out, it is situated at the southern part of the park, opposite the shop. I bet you'll be happy to hear that this laboratory is also used for gold and crystal refinement, so don't miss this one for the sake of it. 
I assume by this time you'll all need some rest and refreshment. So we have an excellent cafe which caters for delicious food and beverages at the other side of the road next to the shop. Of course, if you want to spend some time in the fresh air, we have a perfect picnic area which is just right and northeast of the reception block. Further east, there is a path leading to the northern part of the park, and at the end of it is the toilet. Now, most of the visitors would choose to use the mailbox and send the beautiful postcards. To their friends, to reach it, just look at questions twenty one to twenty seven. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Hi Dave. As you know, I've asked you to come here today to discuss the assignment for our biology class. We must decide what we should do about this very important research work. The whale survey. Yeah, I was also hoping to share some ideas with you. So let's start. OK. I've dug into some journal articles to see what sort of questions we should consider. Most of them include watching time and strongly urge it to be the top concern. What do you say? Yeah, the watching time should be carefully chosen, since I've heard a lot of unnecessary failures concerning picking the wrong time when it all went stormy and murky, and then nothing was seen during the whole field trip. I mean, they could have avoided that easily. Right. Then we should also pay close attention to the sea surface because no one wants to encounter the failures you just mentioned. I think we'd better hope for the best, that it will be calm, with no choppy status. What about the weather conditions? That definitely should be taken into account, as it correlates with all the former factors. Most important of all, as a sighting is made, position and environmental parameters are recorded on standardised sighting pro formats, including time, visibility, position of the ship, using a global positioning system, wind speed and wind direction. Shouldn't there be a set limit for the visibility level, say 50 metres? Cetaceans are really sensitive to sound. They are able to know that something's coming after them, so they would hide in order to avoid possible danger. So let's make it 100 metres, shall we? Yeah, that might be better. Oh, in that case, we'd also need to pay attention to the appearance of the fishing boats, you know, for all the noise that they would make. That's right. Although observations were regularly made, we know very little about whale vocalisation and how they use sound in their behavioural and social interactions. So to understand marine mammals' social interactions, we'll need to use passive acoustic recordings to track and assess the individual behaviours of whales, as well as to identify their appearance. OK, then what about scales? Oh, for each sighting, the number of animals should be counted. The group size, I mean. Also, we need to identify the species, possible age and sex of the individuals. Now you'll hear again. Hi Dave. As you know, I've asked you to come here today to discuss the assignment for our biology class. We must decide what we should do about this very important research work. The whale survey? Yeah, I was also hoping to share some ideas with you. So let's start. OK. I've dug into some journal articles to see what sort of questions we should consider. Most of them include watching time and strongly urge it to be the top concern. What do you say? Yeah, the watching time should be carefully chosen, since I've heard a lot of unnecessary failures concerning picking the wrong time when it all went stormy and murky, and then nothing was seen during the whole field trip. I mean, they could have avoided that easily. Right. 
then we should also pay close attention to the sea surface because no one wants to encounter the failures you just mentioned. I think we'd better hope for the best, that it will be calm, with no choppy status. What about the weather conditions? That definitely should be taken into account, as it correlates with all the former factors. Most important of all, as a sighting is made, position and environmental parameters are recorded on standardised sighting pro formats, including time, visibility, position of the ship, using a global positioning system, wind speed and wind direction. Shouldn't there be a set limit for the visibility level, say 50 metres? Cetaceans are really sensitive to sound. They are able to know that something's coming after them, so they would hide in order to avoid possible danger. So let's make it 100 metres, shall we? Yeah, that might be better. Oh, in that case, we'd also need to pay attention to the appearance of the fishing boats, you know, for all the noise that they would make. That's right. Although observations were regularly made, we know very little about whale vocalisation and how they use sound in their behavioural and social interactions. So to understand marine mammals' social interactions, we'll need to use passive acoustic recordings to track and assess the individual behaviours of whales, as well as to identify their appearance. OK, then what about scales? Oh, for each sighting, the number of animals should be counted. The group size, I mean. Also, we need to identify the species, possible age and sex of the individuals.